So some of you may have seen this graph before and this is really why I laugh at people with global warming because basically if you look the dark grey line is the actual temperatures as taken from ice cores, sea sediments and other sources and the light grey line is the current climate model which as we all know is wrong. You can see we've got the hockey stick here at the right hand edge and they're very very worried about the temperature maybe going up as far as two and a half degrees extra. Well the bad news is historically the temperature has gone up to something like 10 degrees, 12 degrees warmer than it is now and they're saying that a two and a half degree rise would cause a die-off of many species and uh, yeah it may very well do but we're very likely to see that rise in the future. But what are we likely to see just at the moment? And what we're likely to see just at the moment is a return to an ice age. Well, I say return to an ice age. In actual fact, we're in one now. Uh, this is this cool period here, which is extended from the Miocene through the Pleistocene and to today, which is in fact the Holocene. And as you can see, we are in fact in an ice age. We're not heading up towards this 25 degree line we're in one of these dips here and the question is are we going to get a mini dip inside that dip and if we get a dip is that actually going to turn into one of these major dips that might last half a million years or so or is it going to be just another mini ice age like we had in the 1600s hmm let's have a look at that then shall we well major factor of course is solar irradiance now, here's a graph which you have all seen before. Everyone uses it, although it's out of date, because it's the only one that shows the Maunder minimum. And that was the cause of the last big little ice age. So big little ice age, I mean, it was cold, cold. So, what on earth is happening now? Well, here's the bad news. This is how the sun looks, mostly at the moment. Blank, nothing on it. Oh dear. Now, if we look at this second graph here, we can see... Here are the solar cycles and you can look at solar cycle 24 and solar cycle 25 and oh dear we've fallen off a cliff again. If anything we've got less activity than in the Dalton minimum and uh, this is from Penn University and uh, it's quite an interesting little graph here. So looking at the solar cycles and looking at the amount of energy we're likely to get from the sun, we're probably going to have less than the Maunder minimum. So mm, 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 not very good. Now the next major thing that we know causes significant global cooling is volcanic activity. Big volcanoes or lots of little volcanoes we know in the past have caused global cooling. So what's going on at the moment? Well, the bad news is that the Earth's rotation is slowing down. And this essentially means a mismatch in speed between the crust of the Earth and the core. And what this does is put a lot of extra stress on the crust and causes extra volcanic activity and extra earthquakes. In effect, the fault lines start to zip apart a bit. Now, as we can see from this map of the currently erupting volcanoes here in 2018 there's quite a lot of them and some of them are quite large and the real concern with volcanoes is how much ash and how much sulfur dioxide they produce now the ash acts to shadow the earth and uh, i personally was out earlier this year when a lot of uh, smoke and ash drifted over from various wildfires on the continent and also some volcanoes that were going off and you could stand out in the sun and not be able to feel where it was it was that cool now the sulfur dioxide is a major concern because that alters the albedo of the planet and i'll talk about that next so what's all this albedo stuff about anyway well here's a diagram which is quite useful to explain it it's called global energy flows you may find it a bit difficult to see but it's the largest version i could find now as you can see we've got lots and lots of energy coming in 341 watts per meter squared and we've got lots of long wave radiation going out 238.5 watts per meter squared now reflected by the clouds and atmosphere we've got 79 watts reflected by the surface on average 23 watts 
And that leaves us with only 0.9 watts out of this 341 coming in actually reaching the surface. So not a lot. So if anything extra is reflected by the clouds in the atmosphere and by dust in the upper atmosphere, that is a major consideration. And also if there's any increase in energy reflected by the surface. So that's why the problem is there with sulfur dioxide and with volcanic ash and dust in the atmosphere. So what about the surface? What can go wrong there? Well, let's have a look. You can see this chart tells you the reflectivity of various materials and you can see that snow is heading up for 85% reflective and you can see that cumulus stratus is not very far behind. That's clouds to you and me. So clouds reflect a lot. Snow reflects a lot. Ice reflects a bit less. So as you can imagine, the more icy the globe gets during the mini ice age, the less sunlight will actually reach the ground to warm it, which is logical. So that's all you need to know really about albedo. And then of course, on top of all this, there's the orbital factors. Now I've discussed this in a previous video. You can go and find that if you want to know more. So what is the problem? What is going to cause us to be plunged into a long lasting ice age? And that is simply a thing that scientists call the lock in effect. And that is simply that once the ice and snow builds up to a certain square area on the planet, and no one's quite sure where that is, then the sun, even when all the other factors go away, will not be enough to melt the ice and snow that is there. And there's a couple of reasons for this, which I'll talk about in a video on glaciers later. Now, ice and snow could cause it, clouds could cause it, and we know the clouds are increasing because the cosmic rays are increasing. So there are a number of different ways this could come about. And it's my personal opinion that it's 50-50 as to whether we end up with a 60 or 70 year ice age, like the little ice age in the 1600s, or whether we end up with something lasting a few hundred thousand years. On that rather depressing thought, I will leave you. And if you've enjoyed this video or found it useful, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.